You're welcome. We want to look at some review questions in domain one. Um, question one, which of the following is a primary reason uh, for implementing control self assessment? A, lower cost of risk management implementation, uh, automation of body management processes, maintaining risk at the residual level, group participation in the governance of risk. So control self assessment, line managers taking responsibility uh, for audit and control, basically to keep risk within the acceptable level. So the answer is C. Okay, uh, question two, which of the following cards is best fitted for detecting missing gaps? Uh, generalized audit software, integrated test facility, snapshot, audit hook. Okay, audit hook is used to detect, to detect uh, irregularities before they go out of hand. Snapshot is a programming uh, uh, audit tool to uh, check the execution of codes as they are running. So the system takes a before and after image. Okay, ITF basically is used to uh, apply test data to production environment uh, to determine the, uh, the effectiveness of controls in the operations. Generalized audit software like ACL, like IDEA, like active data can be used to detect missing gaps, to detect, to detect uh, duplicates, to recalculate, to recompose statistical analysis. So the best answer here is definitely here, generalized audit software. Question three, which of the following is greatest concern of an ICE auditor reviewing the conduct of a recent database audit? Access controls were not reviewed. The report showed that the database administrator had access to production data. The database was normalized. Follow-up audit was yet to be done. Okay, in this case, follow-up audit was yet to be done. Maybe it was not yet time for the follow-up audit, okay? Database was normalized, that is uh, serious because it means you're going to have redundant data. Um, rep uh, database administrator had access to production data. That is not uh, avoidable, that is not uh, avoidable. TPA will always have access to production data. The greatest challenge here is access controls not being reviewed. All right, who, are, who are the access, what level of access, who are the super users, what can they do, what are they doing? All those were not checked. That is, that is very serious. So the answer here is A, access controls were not reviewed. Okay, question four, which of the following should be done first in a compliance audit? Review of IS policies and standards, Gap analysis against known laws and regulations, documentation of relevant laws and regulations, review of past audit reports. So in compliance audit, you want to check compliance against certain laws. So if we don't document those laws, how do we do compliance audit? So first thing is C, documentation of relevant laws and regulations. Question five, which of the following is an example of substantive tests? Uh, a review of access forms for authorized signatures, Comparing current year receivable balance with prior year, checking error laws for daily entries, review of the access control practices for agreement with policy. Okay, so A, C, D are all compliance tests. The only substantive test there is B, that is the analytical review. Comparing this year receivable with last year receivable figures so that we can be able to do variance analysis. So the answer here is B. Okay, question C is an IS auditor preparing for the network audit of a national bank will first review the prior year audit report, if any, uh, industry publications on wide area networks, updated network topology, network hardware acquisitions within the year. So first, you need to look at the network topology, the network diagrams, showing the nodes, showing the links, showing the uh, connectivity, uh, being uh, used, the protocols being used in the organization, the network. So the answer here is C. Prior audit report is going to give you stale information. Industry publications will not give you specific information about the organization. Network hardware acquisition within the year. What about the ones that were acquired before uh, prior, in prior years? So the best answer is C, updated network topology. Okay, question seven, a major challenge with integrated test facility is that test data may mix with production data. It cannot be used for online auditing. Auditing input is required in developing the test data. Cost of implementation always exceeds attendant benefits. Your answer here is A. You are going to use test data in a live environment. Live data and test data may mix together. All right, B is wrong. C is not correct. Uh, D is not correct. So the answer here is A. 
Question eight, the reliability of an audit evidence is best determined by the quantity of the evidence, technology that produces the evidence, quality of the evidence, timing of the evidence. Note that quantity of the evidence is synonymous with sufficiency of the evidence. Reliability of the evidence is synonymous with quality of the evidence. All right, so the best answer here is C, okay? Uh, question nine, and I also divided the population into 10 groups and selected five samples from each group. This is an example of that sampling. All right, so at five minutes, you need discovery, attribute, difference, estimation. Discovery sampling is a type of attribute sampling. All right, and we're talking about uh, substantive tests here. So B is out. Difference estimation is a variable sampling method that compares the book value with the data value. So that is out. Living stratified mean per unit. Divide the population into classes in, out of each class with the sample. That is stratified mean per unit. Okay, question 10. Only confidence is determined to be high in another sample. This means sample size is low, sample size is big, precision is high, or decrease is high. Okay, if the confidence coefficient is high, definitely your sample is large. Okay, so confidence coefficient is highly proportional to the size of the sample used in all the tests. So your answer here is definitely. Okay, uh, review of one's work in IS auditing is referred to as a bridge of professional independence, professional skepticism, professional competence, organizational independence. Professional independence means the auditor should be independent and should be seen to be independent of the auditor. So that one is more of relationships, so financial relationship, market relationship, friend relationship, you know. So uh, professional skepticism is about, you know, you don't fully trust the system that our are. So you don't go with 100 percent of trust. Everything they give you, you just accept. Management actions, you just believe is okay. So you need to have question marks, you know, in, at the back of your mind. That's professional skepticism, professional competence. Okay, you need to have skills, competence, the, the ability, capacity to do the job. Okay. Independence means you need to be independent of the area where you are auditing. You can't be involved in a software development project and you are also doing auditing the software development project. It's not correct. So that is organizational independence. The answer here is D. Okay, uh, 12, which of the following is most important to the success of an ice audit engagement? Existence of an audit data, selection of competent auditors, understanding the internal environment, documentation of significant firms. I, lo I, I love this question. Uh, because actually everything is correct. All right, audit data is important for internal audit uh, uh, processes and projects. Okay, auditors have the competence, you need to make significant findings. But the most important you see, understanding the internal environment. No matter how good you are as an auditor, if you don't have an understanding of the environment, internally and externally, forget, you cannot do anything. Okay, so the best answer is C. Okay, question 13. Majority thresholds should be based solely on size of transactions viewed through the audit process aligned to industry averages approved by data. So this is like completing the sentence. Okay, and there are questions that come by that in this like that. So you need to look at each of the options. Should maturity threshold be based solely on size of transaction? The answer is no. All right. The auditing standards say your maturity threshold is determined by size and nature, size and nature of the transactions. So there are some transactions that may look at Syria, but when you start asking questions, all right, you may discover that there are serious issues. So you cannot use size alone. Okay, uh, industry average, industry average is fine, but you need to look at the specificity, the, 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 um, the intrinsic issues about that particular organization also. Okay, and I've not seen any standard that says fatality should be determined by regulators. Okay, so it, it has to be reviewed as this audit, audit is progressing, issues will be coming up, new information, new evidence is coming up that will dictate or direct you to either increase or reduce your materiality threshold. So the best answer here is B. Uh, question 14, a major consideration peculiar to forensic audits is compliance test, sampling, business process view, chain of custody. If you look at it carefully, ABC uh, are common to most audits, environmental audits, IS audits, financial audits. You see, you know, all these compliance tests, sampling, business processes, which are common. But what is not common in most of these is chain of custody. Okay? Chain of custody most of the time is not more forensic audit because you must, you must preserve the evidence before the court of law. So you need to show evidence that the evidence that has not been tampered with before the evidence is prepared, is presented to the jury. So the answer is D, chain of custody. Okay, 15. What are the following is a suitable criteria that can be applied in IS audit? Assertions made by management, ISO standards, CATS, IS steering committee. So the question here now, do you understand what a criteria is in audit? A criteria is a benchmark, it's a standard that you can use to query what you have been given in an, you know, in an audit or what you have seen so that you're able to know whether it's compliance or not. So assertions made by management, definitely that is not a criteria, okay? Um, ISO standards, CATS, IS, IS steering committee. So the best answer here is B. If I want to audit your business continuity, what do I use? ISO 2201. I want to audit your ISMS, Information Security Management System, I use ISO 27001. I want to audit your IT service management framework, I use ISO 20000, okay, as a criteria. So the answer here is B. Okay, question 16, which of the following will best reduce audit risk? Reduction of sample size, knowledge of business processes, documenting and reporting significant findings, understanding of red fund laws and regulations. Remember, they said best. Okay, A is completely out because the moment you reduce sample size, you have put yourself at a disadvantage. Okay, so um, A is out. 
okay so we have b c and d which are all good points but the best answer here is b your knowledge of business processes will help you of course that will ask cover d because we can understand business processes we are understanding the laws and regulations also okay i want to understand business processes we're able to be able to identify significant findings so the best answer here is b 17. And I already an e commerce for authentication controls. So you most likely check the use of hash function algorithms, check the G to one type password firewalls. So the question here is what to test your knowledge of e commerce and uh, what test your knowledge of authentication, meaning of authentication. Authentication means I should be able to identify the initiator of a transaction, I should be able to identify a user. So hash function algorithms are used to determine integrity, whether data have been altered, whether they have been changed before it gets to the receiver. Okay, check digits is used to detect. So to detect uh, transposition errors, okay? Somebody wants to type 67, the person type 76. Check the to flag that. Okay, firewalls are used to defend the network in case of unwanted traffic. So the best answer is C, OTP, one time password. So send a message to the person's phone or email so that it can input the one time password to the website that you determine that the person is actually uh, the initiator of that transaction. So question 18, business risk can have an impact on auditory true or false. The question is testing your knowledge of business risk. So business risk is any event that can hinder the organization from achieving the business objective. So look at COVID-19. COVID-19 is a business risk that has affected virtually all businesses all over the world. So imagine an organization that has an inventory figure now before COVID-19. During COVID-19, they were not making sales. So there's, there's a risk of, of, of obsolescence, which means that it's possible, you know, looking at IES2, okay, uh, that it is possibility that the event is already impaired. So it has to be written down. So if they don't write that the inventory, uh, in the financial statement, and auditors who did not query that, that decision not to write down inventory, it means that the audit report is, is going to be faulty. So, you can see that the business risk of COVID 19 has impacted on the auditor's opinion or have been faulty. Okay, so definitely business risk can have serious impact on the audit quality of the audit report. So, the answer is that it is true. Okay. Uh, question 19, selecting experienced and competent IS auditors for an audit engagement will most likely reduce EN risk, control risk, detection risk, business risk. So detection risk, if you remember in our, in our uh, training, detection risk is the only risk in the audit risk that auditors can directly control. So when you bring in experienced and competent auditors, you can reduce detection risk. And risk is the risk that comes with the business. Only management can have direct impact on that. Control risk is the risk that controls will fail. Only management can set up the control system. Okay, auditors can only come and make recommendations. Business risk is the risk that can come from internal and from external uh, forces, which can hinder the ability of the organization to, to be sustainable. Okay, so that is also the, 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 uh, the responsibility of management, not auditors. Okay, so the answer here is C, detection risk. The last question, continuous monitoring should be the primary responsibility of IS auditors, IT management, board of directors, IS strategy committee. So continuous monitoring, take note, is the responsibility of IT, while continuous auditing is the responsibility of internal audit or IS auditors as the case may be. So in this case, your answer is B. So the, the essence of reviewing these questions is to give you an idea of the kind of questions that can come out in domain two and to give you an idea of how to tackle them. And I've also be able to go over some of the concepts which we have uh, discussed earlier in the, the domain one uh, training video. Thank you.